What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to finish off membrane transport. So as a quick recap, remember, just like these donkeys, we are made up of what? We're made up of billions and billions of cells, right? Now, once again, I ask you this so many times now, what is this thing here surrounding the cell? This is what? A cell membrane, a membrane. And once again, what is the function of the membrane? The membrane serves to control what goes in, what goes out, and what goes in, right? It's like the wall of the cell. Now, by what ways can things get in and out of the cell? What mechanisms? Just like I said before, humans, we can travel, we can transport by walking, um, running, ship, boat, whatever, flying, anything, right? So many ways. So the same way molecules can move in and out of cells through different ways. They include simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis, endocytosis and exocytosis and active transport. Now, so far, I've made a video separately on all of them except this one. So now we're going to go into this last one, endocytosis and exocytosis. And don't worry, it's actually quite an easy one compared to these other ones. So let's just get into it. So for the fun of it, I'm going to change the color of the cell. Okay, we've been looking at this cell now for so long. Let's change the color, but it's still just a cell. Now we're going to zoom in to an area here to explain uh, endocytosis and exocytosis really well. So first we'll zoom into here and explain endocytosis. Okay, so here we are. We're zooming in to this little part here so we can see the membrane more clearly. Okay, endocytosis. So first of all, what the heck? So this here is the cytoplasm. This here is the outside of the cell. This right here is our phospholipid bilayer, our actual membrane. And we have one protein here. Now, so far, we've talked about so many ways of transport, all of which included either the membrane itself or a protein channel. Now, we've covered all the kinds of molecules, small molecules, how they transport, uh, bigger molecules, how they transport, hydrophilic molecules, hydrophobic molecules, right? We've all found a place for them in these transport mechanisms. But now, what is the purpose of this last one, this last method? This last method called endocytosis is the method by which we travel, um, um, by which we uh, transport humongous things, so really, really big things that are too big to pass through the membrane or even this protein channel, so they're very big. But also, this method is very good to transport many things together, so it can transport in bulk, so it either transports big things or it transports many things um, at once. So that's the main purpose of endocytosis. Now, endo means into, and cytosis means a cell, okay? So it's a method, endocytosis is a method of bringing things into the cell, endocytosis. So let's see how it works. So pretend we have this really big thing here. Let's pretend this cell right here is a white blood cell. White blood cells are cells that are responsible for defending us against bacteria. So they pretty much just eat bacteria. So let's say here we have a really big molecule or a bacteria and our white blood cell wants to get rid of it. So what's going to happen is this bacteria, the cell will approach the bacteria and pretty much the membrane, if we pay attention here, will start folding or bending to fold around, kind of like a mouth, to eat this bacteria. It's going to try and bend itself around. So eventually, after this membrane completely um, uh, surrounded it, it will pinch off. Okay, it will pinch off. So a piece of the membrane will basically break off with the bacteria or the big molecule inside of it. And then the rest of the membrane will repair. So the membrane won't have a gap in it. It will just pinch off. And as it pinches off, the remaining membrane will um, go back together. It will basically repair itself. So you can see that this little thing here is basically made up of the original membrane. And inside it is the molecule that we wanted to eat. So... That's really it for endocytosis. Now, what do we call this molecule that we formed? We give this a specific name. We call this a vesicle. And it sounds to me a lot like vehicle, vehicle, because it kind of is. So it's like you bring it in and this little vehicle or vesicle is going to move around to different spots to do whatever, whatever we want to do with this little thing inside, this molecule, this bacteria. So it's like a little vesicle, a vehicle. That's what we call it. Now, remember, I said this process, both endocytosis and exocytosis, is responsible for moving large things or moving things in bulk, meaning many small things, but moving them at once. Now, this process 
is only possible because of cholesterol. If this membrane was super, super rigid, it wouldn't be possible. If this membrane was like a, a stone, like a, like a wall, it wouldn't be able to bend, right, to be able to engulf this thing. So what makes, we learned this before, what makes the membrane flexible or fluid so that it can bend? We know it's cholesterol. So we know cholesterol has such a crucial role in allowing for endocytosis and exocytosis to happen. Without cholesterol, it just simply wouldn't work. So remember, cholesterol makes the uh, membrane fluid and bendy. And I made a video um, on this in the membrane structure. So you can check that out if you want more details. Now, finally, um, this process doesn't just happen naturally. We need to expend energy. We need to use ATP for this to happen. I'm not going to show you exactly where and how ATP is used because you don't need to know that. That's like some university level stuff. So you can, when you get there, you can do that if you ever go to university for, for biology or something. But for now, just know we need this energy to be able to make this membrane bend the way it does. It doesn't just naturally bend this way. So that's important. It needs ATP. That's why I kind of consider it similar to active transport. It requires energy. It, it's not like these three that happen without energy usage, right? Both active transport and endocytosis and exocytosis, they need ATP. That's why I made them red and I made these green. Okay, so now let's just quickly finish off the last one. Exocytosis. Exo means, we're going to, let's just go here. Exo means get out of. So exit, kind of like exit the cell. So it's a, basically the exact, the exact opposite of endocytosis endocytosis coming into the cell forming a vesicle with the thing aside exocytosis is the reverse let me show you so basically here we have the big cell again now i'm showing you not just the membrane we're looking at the full cell because it's kind of important for this explanation um let me show you so basically what happens with exocytosis is sometimes a cell makes things that it wants to get rid of that wants to send for other cells. Maybe other cells can't make this thing. It's kind of like a, a company. You have like a manufacturing place that makes the materials and then you export it to other places, right? So the other places can have it as well. That's the same with a cell sometimes. Sometimes certain cells can make things and other cells need it, but they can't make it. So these cells will need to um, do exocytosis to send it out so that the other cells can have it. Um, that's just one example. And again, it's always going to be big molecules or many molecules at once. So let's see how this starts. So for example, say this cell can make a protein or an enzyme that another cell needs. So let's say we know the rough ER, so this, this part here, these ribosomes, they can make, so let's put it here, they can make um, proteins. So basically these green things here are proteins. So we just pretend they're proteins or whatever big molecule we're talking about, and they will put them in a vesicle just like this. So just like this, it's, I basically have a simplified vesicle here. But basically, they'll put it into a vesicle. And so the vesicle will contain the proteins, and they will send this vesicle. Remember, it's like a vehicle. It travels around the cell. And it will send it to this little organelle here. So from the rough ER, which is here, or whatever, the ribosomes that make it, it will send these proteins in a vesicle to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is a little organelle that will basically modify this protein, make sure it's perfect and ready to go. And then after that, so after it leaves this Golgi apparatus, it'll get sent, uh, basically out of here, it'll get sent to the membrane. Just like this. So you can see it gets sent to the membrane, and once it reaches the membrane, it's going to do the reverse of what happened here. This thing, this vesicle, will go to the membrane, and the membrane of the vesicle will become a part of the the, of the membrane of the cell. So it's basically going to fuse in a sense. So you can see this membrane here is going to become this one here, but it's going to join the main membrane and then release whatever is inside. So it's finally going to release this protein that the cell made or whatever big molecule we're talking about. You just need to know it's big molecules that travel in bulk. Don't need to know that many real life examples, but I guess um, one real life example that you'll learn about more later is neurotransmission. This is when your neurons, so the cells in your nervous system, um, need to communicate with one another. So they need to send molecules to communicate with each other. And so the way they send those molecules, those neurotransmitters, which you'll learn about. Again, if you don't understand this, don't worry, you're going to learn it later. But they send those neurotransmitters by exocytosis as well, just like this. Now, lastly, these vesicles don't just float around freely. They travel on little pipes called microtubules. So they get dragged along kind of like a 
a roller coaster. They get dragged along on little roller coasters called microtubules. Now that's it for endocytosis and exocytosis.